So you guys got to remember that uh, this thing ran, we uh, started it up and I know that the throttle itself works because uh, when I got on the throttle it revved up a bit, but uh, it kind of sputtered as it revved up. So uh, chances are it's uh, just uh, a piece of gunk built up in the main jet and a carb clean should solve all the problems. Okay, so right away we may have found our issue. So I'm unscrewing the main jet here. We're gonna pull that out and take a look at all that stuff guys look at all that stuff built up in there so that is one of the issues of why this machine isn't running the way it's supposed to okay we're gonna go ahead and remove this little plastic piece here set that off to the side and then go ahead and start removing with a smaller uh, standard screwdriver all of our other jets so that's our pilot jet and uh, a metering jet and whatnot and then uh, we'll punch out this rod here that holds our float on and we'll be able to take that off as well and then we're going to remove our uh, air fuel mixture screw which I believe is that one because uh, this one here guys over here that's your idle screw so uh, that sets the position of your throttle backstop right so the more in the more open your throttle is because when you push on that it lifts that slide up and lets more air go through see that so by pushing that in you're opening your throttle more. So that's your idle screw, so uh, we don't have to worry about that. Uh, we can adjust that once uh, we get this thing back together. Okay, and a little trick is uh, either take a picture or uh, align your carburetor and then align your jets all in the order of which you took them out. So I took out my main, then uh, our pilot, and then uh, we took out a little tiny guy right on the right side there. So uh, now I'll know that, uh, you know, I won't put this one in there or that one in there and, you know, mix it up. A uh, good little uh, tip to uh, just make sure you put things back together the way they're supposed to go. Okay, and when you guys pull out uh, this little guy right here, there's going to be a metering tube underneath it. So you guys are going to want to be careful when you flip your carburetor. So I'm talking about the one right in there. So what you want to do to get that out, guys, is uh, lift your carburetor like this, flip it, and just give it a little knock. And uh, this metering tube should... Uh, fall right out just like that. Uh, but now what we're gonna do is uh, go ahead and take your screwdriver and uh, screw this air fuel ratio screw all the way in until it's snug. So we go a half turn and that was about it. So that thing was just maybe a half, three quarter turns uh, out. So now we're going to unscrew it all the way. So it might be anywhere from uh, you know one to uh, one and three quarters but now at least we know um, a starting position. But uh, my guess is that thing was, uh, you know, only three quarters out because uh, this thing was so filled with gunk that maybe, uh, maybe they had to run it like that. Uh, but the proper setting uh, that's in the manual is to start at around two turns out and then adjust from there, give or take. And when you pull out your air fuel mixture screw, don't forget that there's going to be a little spring in behind it. Okay, and now we've uh, pulled that rod out and uh, lifted our float off with our needle valve that has a rubber tip on it. The rubber tip looks like it's in good condition. So now we'll be able to uh, clean that little hole there. Fuel comes in through here, goes through here. Your uh, float, when there's uh, hardly any fuel in the uh, sediment bowl, will uh, be all the way at the bottom, right? Because there will be no gas pushing the float up to the top. And uh, fuel will come right through here, fill this up. And then uh, once the fuel level starts to rise, your float ends up rising to the top and it closes off that hole right there with your rubber tip needle valve. And then your uh, carburetor, when you uh, go wide open throttle, it opens up that guy right there with your butterfly valve at the back, letting more air through, which then creates a Venturi effect, which uh, sucks fuel through here and when it goes through these little jets it ends up getting atomized and goes into an air fuel mixture which you can adjust using your you guessed it air fuel mixture screw okay so i've got my basket here for my ultrasonic cleaner uh, this carburetor here is uh, pretty big and uh, you know it takes up a lot of space so what i'm going to do is uh, probably set it in just like that and uh, clean it and run it like that so the water level will be maybe about here and then i'll go ahead and flip it and uh, clean the other side i never used to use this basket but uh, what happens is uh, this basket uh, you know holds itself up on uh, the top and it suspends itself off the bottom so uh, the nice thing about using this is uh, all the sediment and all the dirt that my ultrasonic cleaner is going to blast off of this thing will actually pass below 
this uh, little basket here and settle to the bottom. Uh, so if I don't use this and I just have my carburetor inside of there, all that uh, dirt that the ultrasonic cleaner is uh, blasting off of here due to uh, cavitation, which is the explosion of uh, the little air bubbles inside of here, um, basically all that uh, dirt is going to settle to the bottom and uh, you know when I uh, go to pick this thing up and maybe flip it uh, it could uh, mix some of that up and uh, I don't want uh, any of that sediment getting back into the carburetor so I might end up running this thing through the cleaner a few different times and uh, while that's going I'll uh, work on something else okay I've also pried off uh our little boot there that uh, bolts onto our engine uh, just so I can uh, you know kind of maximize uh, the amount of uh, stuff I can clean here so I'm gonna be cleaning my carburetor uh, I'm gonna be cleaning this uh, sediment bowl here and I'm going to be cleaning all of my little jets and uh, needle valves and then I'll probably just wipe down the float because it's just plastic and uh, I can clean it up easily that way. Okay, so I got uh, some uh, solution of uh, hot water at about 60 degrees Celsius and uh, I'm gonna be dunking my carburetor right in. Just gonna lay that right in like that. Now this is a three liter ultrasonic cleaner. So uh, obviously the whole thing doesn't fit in. If I didn't use the basket, uh, it probably would. But uh, i rather use the basket because, again, the sediment is going to sink to the bottom and uh, it'll just keep things a, a lot cleaner. So I'm going to be running this thing for about uh, 15, maybe 20 minutes. Uh, I'll go work on uh, something else, maybe another lawnmower or something. And then I'll come back, I'll flip it and uh, let it clean the other side. Okay, so it just finished on the one side. And uh, just a quick preliminary look. You guys can see, blast it off all that nasty stuff that was sitting on the top of it. That thing's hot, super hot. I got her cranked up to about, uh, yeah, like I said, 60 degrees. So if we take a look at this thing, we can see the top, super dirty, right? And then we can see the bottom where it was inside of the ultrasonic cleaner, super clean, super clean. So I'm gonna flip it, we'll do the other side. Okay, so I got the carburetor all cleaned up now, fresh out of the ultrasonic cleaner. Blasted all the gunk off, you guys can see. Looks pretty good. There's still uh, a little bit of discoloration you know, from uh, from a little bit of dirt that's hard to get off, but uh, that's no big deal. I got a clean rag uh, set down so that uh, once I uh, blast this thing with the air compressor, uh, then I'll put the carburetor there and all my uh, clean parts will go there. Okay, so we got the carburetor all blown out. I've uh, replaced this uh, O-ring right there, uh, just wiped it off. We're gonna get our top plate back on and then uh, this side of the carburetor is done. Uh, I'm just in the process of taking all of the little jets here to my wire wheel. So you guys can see it's cleaning them up nicely. So we're gonna end up going from something like this to something like that. So you guys can see a little bit shinier and uh, that'll help keep uh, dirt and debris from sticking to it because uh, this surface here you can feel it's uh, kind of rough whereas uh, up there it's nice and shiny and uh, to do that I'm just using uh, the brass wheel on my uh, bench grinder here. So again this right here is much better than that right there. So let me go ahead and get those cleaned up and then we'll put all of these jets back in. Then what you want to do is uh, get yourself an oxyacetylene tip cleaner and just go ahead and poke through all of your uh, metering rods just like this one and uh, your little jets uh, just uh, push them through and you can get the really small ones too to go through smaller holes just like that. Okay, and with the carburetor in the same position and all of our jets in the same position you guys can see there I took a little picture uh, we're gonna go ahead and start putting these all back together we're gonna go ahead and grab this metering rod and we're gonna put the thin end down first into this hole right there and that should just slip into position just like that and we're gonna go ahead and get this little guy which we've also poked through to make sure that it's free and clear of debris and we're gonna thread that one in. Okay, now we're going to take our float with our rubber tip needle valve and we're going to drop that into position just like that. Okay, now you guys might not have this tool, but I have a carburetor pressure tester and uh, basically uh, this thing, it's a one-way pump, so you pump up this little uh, push button there and it pushes air through here into that uh, hole that I showed you where the uh, needle valve goes and uh, basically it tests the seal of that rubber tip. So right now we are currently holding just over 5 PSI. 
which means that uh, the rubber tip on that needle valve is uh, sealing nicely on the uh, brass seat inside of there and we don't have to replace anything. So if you guys watch my video, uh, how to pressure test carburetors, which you can see in the top right corner of your screen right now, basically we spent $110 on that pressure tester tool, uh, but what it allows me to do is pressure test the carburetor to ensure 100% that the carburetor will not leak so that when I put it back on the machine and I hook up the fuel and I turn the fuel on, this carburetor shouldn't have any leaks. So I don't have to you know, disassemble uh, the fuel tank, uh, drain the fuel again, disassemble the entire carburetor, uh, bring it back to the workbench, take it all apart, go out and get the part and then have to do it all over again uh, because you can't charge your customer for you know work that you did twice. So 110 bucks well spent in my opinion. When we go to put this back into position guys you want to make sure that that little notch is right there just where it is because that notch right there gives room for this to slide down. So basically it just slips in just like this and it should be level just like it is now. Now for optimal performance, uh, basically you're gonna have to adjust this while the engine is running at operating temperature. So get your machine warm and uh, what you're gonna wanna do is uh, crack the throttle, uh, rev it up and then let off the throttle and uh, you'll figure out quickly whether your machine is rich or lean. So if the RPMs kind of stay high after you let off the throttle, chances are your mixture is lean. If your RPMs drop quickly and it kind of bogs out, chances are you're rich and you're getting too much fuel. So if you rev up your machine and then you let off the throttle and the RPM stays a little high, you're lean. So what you want to do is screw in that mixture screw to richen your mixture. Now, again, if you um, let off your throttle and it kind of bogs out, means you're getting too much fuel. What you want to do is unscrew the mixture screw there. And uh, basically, guys, it's going to be trial and error. You're just going to have to play with it to get it exact. Okay, so now the carburetor is uh, back and uh, assembled so what I'm gonna do now is uh, just clean up some of these fuel lines wipe them down because uh, again I don't want uh, dirt getting onto this uh, fresh carburetor here that we got um, so I'm gonna clean up the fuel lines get the fuel lines and all of the overflow lines back onto this carburetor in the positions that they were um, uh, again uh, I've left this cover off because we're gonna have to re connect our throttle cable. Um, that piece of plastic I'm going to put into the ultrasonic cleaner and clean that as well as this guy here which is the boot that bolts onto our engine. I'm going to get that cleaned up as well. Okay so before uh, we go any further I just want to uh, stop and say that to all of these little pieces that have these little o-rings you guys want to make sure that you can kind of see the o-ring popping out past the surface of the metal or the plastic. That's super important guys because uh, what this is going to do is it's going to create a seal in between your engine right and your carburetor and uh, these tighten up pretty good and we get a nice rubber seal around here so we don't have to worry too much about air leaking there but uh, you want to make sure that uh, these o-rings here are in good condition. If they're not just replace them. O-rings are really cheap and uh, basically over time uh, these will depress and they'll stay flattened and what will happen is you'll get air coming in before it mixes with the fuel mixture so it's going to throw your mixture way out of whack you're going to have a lean mixture and your machine might uh, start hunting which is revving high low high low high low so you want to make sure that these are in good condition oh and a quick little uh, tip guys when you go to put uh, this cover back on it has uh, a little plastic tab on it you want to make sure that goes into that slot in the aluminum and then depress it down over top of that I wanted to show you here because it might be a little hard to show you on the machine okay now this stuff right here guys is exactly what I was talking about before loose dirt and we don't want any of that getting into our machine so what I'm gonna use is just uh, an old toothbrush and I'm gonna go in there and make sure all the loose dirt is out of there okay so first things first before we set our carburetor back down inside of there we're going to re-thread our uh, throttle cable back into here so again take your carburetor and just start spinning it and uh, get it up until there you can tighten up your locking nut afterwards you don't have to worry just get it uh, threaded on there so that we can get this part back in and then we can drop the carburetor down okay and now you can go ahead and put your throttle cover back on with the two screws and again remember just put that little tab into that aluminum slot down there okay so now that we got our carburetor down in here 
we're going to put our front boot on so just pop that on you don't have to tighten up these uh, straps just yet guys we just want to get it in there and uh, we've left our spacer out to give us an extra maybe a quarter inch of play so then you're going to want to push your carburetor back into your back boot this one's a little bit more malleable and pliable so you should be able to get it in there pretty easily next thing we're going to do is uh, get this strap on and we're going to tighten that one up on the back and now's a good time to uh, bend back those tabs that hold your throttle cable into position just bend them down just like that so they hold into place and once you get your uh, front boot into the right position we're going to go ahead and slide the spacer in with it as well again remembering that this o-ring goes towards the engine okay and before we go any farther we're going to take our choke cable here and we're going to drop it into this hole right there and then uh, we're going to tighten that up using a 14 millimeter wrench okay now we're starting out with uh, just one bolt here just so we can get things lined up and then we'll go to the other side get the other bolt in then we can get the airbox tube fitted up after we get the carburetor secured i got that right here i ended up washing that off because uh again i don't want a bunch of dirt falling off and that hooks up down here to your airbox and then at the top up here to your frame and the reason of uh it hooking up to the frame is uh it's almost acts as a impromptu snorkel so if you take this thing underwater uh, you know, you won't have a bunch of water getting sucked in through an air filter that's, let's say, down here. Okay, and once you get the bolts tightened up on that boot, go ahead and tighten up your strap. And then we'll go ahead and tighten up this lock nut here on our throttle. And our carburetor is officially back installed. Okay, so before we hook up our fuel line to our fuel tank, I want to uh, drain our fuel tank and uh, flush it out, make sure that it's clean and uh, free of debris. And uh, we're just going to put that guy right down there for now so that uh, nothing gets in it and then I can go ahead and uh, drain out this tank. I think it might have some rust in it because uh, when I drained this carburetor, uh, a lot of brown and uh, kind of greenish gas came out of it. So again, you don't wanna have to go through all the work that we just did um, and then hook up your fuel line, open your uh, petcock to turn your fuel uh, valve on and then have all of that rusty gas go right into your uh, freshly rebuilt carburetor. And now I'm going to take this boot that I was talking about earlier and we're gonna hook that up down there and then up here to the frame okay so a little trick to do in this is uh, try to get your uh, strap into the point where uh, you can just get your phillips head screwdriver right through there to tighten that one up and then uh, up here at the top i've actually split it open so that uh, i can put this rubber tube over top of the frame and then we're going to stretch that wrap it around and then we'll get that tightened up okay so to drain this thing i've got uh, kind of a little setup here so uh, basically I just put the tank and balanced it on the workbench. Then I hooked up a fuel line here and then that's going down to a jerry can here. So uh, that's just an old piece of fuel line that we haven't used. So uh, I'll probably end up uh, opening this up just a little bit so it vents a little easier. I'll turn on our fuel valve and I'll let that fill up. And uh, this is a well ventilated area. I'm gonna open up the windows. Uh, I'll have the fan going. I just shut it off because it makes a noise when I'm filming and uh, yeah. So I'll drain this out and then uh, it just beats, you know, opening this up and uh, dumping it out the top and making a mess with like funnels and everything else. So this will be easy. I can uh, open it up and uh, walk away. And then once the fuel's in here, I'll have a little bit better idea of whether it's clean or not. Okay, so I'm ready to put the uh, fuel tank back onto the three-wheeler here. And uh, I took off these little rubber tabs. They just uh, pop on there and then the fuel tank slips on over that and bolts right there. And once you get the tank back on, onto those little rubber tabs, we're gonna take our little bracket here with our bolt, push that through, and then we'll get that tightened up. And then that's what uh, helps the seat clip in. Okay, now we're gonna hook the fuel line back up, fill this thing up with some uh, fuel, and uh, fire it up. I'll adjust the carburetor if I need to, whether I gotta adjust the idle or the air fuel mixture screw and then uh, we'll go ahead and get the oil changed on this thing once it's all warmed up. Okay, and I just wanted to show you guys now, if we do have to make any adjustments, it will be this big guy right there. That'll be our idle screw, and then it'll be that one right there with the slot into it. That's our air fuel mixture screw. So uh, they're pretty easily accessible, especially this one because it's got the plastic knob on it. Uh, that one back there be a little more tricky, but uh, we do have uh, some stubby standard screwdrivers, so should be okay. Okay, so moment of truth, we got our fuel valve on. Uh, I should probably choke it a little bit. 
she runs so the idle I'm thinking is a little low and to do that we're just going to tighten this uh, plastic tipped one here so go in here and we're going to tighten that up and if you guys remember when I had the carb apart that should raise the throttle a little bit which should increase our idle RPM okay let's try this again Okay, so it's idling a little higher now, but I might have to do the air fuel screw because it's kind of choppy. Okay, so you guys can hear it, it's running choppy. So what I'm gonna do is uh, go down to that air fuel ratio screw right down there, and I'm gonna unscrew it. I'm not gonna tighten it up, and it's gonna lean up the mixture, and it's gonna bring up the RPMs a little bit. Idling a little better now. Okay, so we're back on the workbench here. Um, I've pulled the uh, spark plug out. This here is a Champion RA6HC spark plug. So this is a six range spark plug. The higher in this number that you go, the hotter the plug gets. So every time I go online to uh, the forums for uh, the three wheelers, uh, just trying to find out what uh, type of spark plug this runs, all the guys say that uh, they should be running a 7 or an 8 range because it's a little bit hotter and uh, it'll burn off a little bit of extra fuel. Now I could pull this carburetor back off and then adjust the metering rod that goes into the main jet. Same thing that I did on the video that you should see popping up into the top right of your screen right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to buy two spark plugs. I'm going to get a 7 and an 8 range and uh, we're going to try it with that. Now the issue that I was having was that I'd get on the throttle, it would bog out just a little bit, then the RPMs would pick up and it would backfire a little bit. So what that tells me is that uh, it shouldn't be an issue with uh, the fuel delivery again because the carbs clean uh, but what that tells me is that uh, fuel is going into the cylinder and then uh, it's bogging out because uh, it's not burning off the fuel and then once you let off the throttle um, the fuel delivery slows down a little bit it starts to burn off that extra and then I was getting a little bit of backfiring so basically that tells me that it's not burning off the fuel because too much fuel is going in and not getting burnt and then uh, after some of it gets burnt off it burns off the rest of it which then um, creates a little bit of a backfire so a 7 or an 8 range spark plug should solve this issue hopefully fingers crossed if not I'll pull the carb off and I'll adjust that metering rod like I've done uh, again on that little china quad so it's the same issue it's just a different application okay so I went out and got a dr8es-l ngk spark plug uh, they come two in a pack so uh, he can have a spare one now this is the spark plug that uh, the manual recommends to run so we're gonna put this new ngk spark plug in there and uh, see how it runs okay so we got the uh, new spark plug in and uh, unfortunately I'm having the same issue you get on the throttle and she just uh, dies out. So I'm probably gonna have to take the car back off. Do the same thing that I did on the other uh, China quad there, which is uh, move that clip down to uh, bring up that metering rod. Well, that's it for part two. If you enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You can click over here to subscribe and you can click over here to watch one of my previous videos. Be sure to uh, come on back next week as I upload weekly. And as always guys, thanks for watching.